Hello, it's Mindy, and welcome to part two. Do you have what it takes to become a web developer? Now, if this is your first time watching, and this is my only second tutorial, but if it's your first time watching this tutorial, you might want to check out part one, which is what you'll need to start before moving on to the second part. Okay, for everybody who is already on the second part, let's go ahead and get started. This part is what you'll need after school. Now, this is an assumption that you decided to go to school or get your certification. This is not for people who are, have on the job training already. So what you'll need after school, the very first thing you're going to need is a really good internship. Experience is a must in this field. Even though you're coming out of school, even though you may have just graduated yesterday, when you're looking for a job, they're going to want to know. What experience do you have? So the very first thing you should do is really buck up on a lot of internships. Get more than one. If you have to get three internships to get some experience under your belt or to get a full year of experience, do it. And do it while you're in school too. Don't wait until you graduate or you get out of school or you finish your certification. Try to get your internships while in school because that's very important. The more internships you have, like I said, the more experience you have, the more likely you'll be able to find a job and the more quickly you'll be able to find a job as well. Next, understanding of the workflow. Every job wants to know if you understand the workflow. The workflow is a concept, delivery, content development, design, development again, launch and post launch. Concept is where the idea is created. Discovery is where you usually sit down and have a meeting and try to discover ideas and ways of creating that concept. Content development is when you decide to create the layout and get the information that's needed to have a good layout. Design is when you begin to design your template. Development is when you add functionality to the design and other aspects of the um, functionality to the website. Launching is when it's already completed and you decide to upload it to the browser or Internet Explorer or Firefox or whatever you want to call it. And then it's post launch. That's usually when you do a lot of testing to make sure everything's correct, correcting any bugs that you might have in, in your website, making sure you do cross browser, um, um, cross browser testing so that you can tell whether or not the website is functioning in Firefox, if it shows the same way in Internet Explorer, and so on. So having a good understanding of the website workflow will help your cause after school. Next, basic knowledge of databases. A database is a way of organizing data that's, that's then stored for later. For instance, you have an e-commerce site. You have a lot of products. You have your products listed on a screen. You have customers that come in. You want a way to capture the customer's information and store it, and then retrieve it later on, as well as your order information. So the most, the easiest way to do that would be with a database. The quickest way to explain a database would be like a box, and your customers are the toys. You take the toys, you put the toys in the box, and you store them till later. Later, when you decide you want to play with your toys, you open the box and take them out. To take them out, you would query it. So to put them in, you would fill out a form, and the database would accept the information. To take them out, you would query your ad to take them out. So that's pretty much what a database is. Next, proficiency in several languages, basic languages. These are a must-have in, in web development. I don't care where you go, what you do, you got to have these three. Even if you're not going to use all three of them in your job, it's very important for you to have them. The first one is HTML. HTML is the foundation of the web page. I'll get more into that, into details about that in my tutorials, my next tutorials, which will be HTML basics. But for right now, I'm just going to give you an overview. HTML is the foundation of any website. You cannot create a website without having the foundation. CSS is how you style your website. It's a styling tool that creates all the pretty looks that you see on a website. And that is very important. Those two are going to be the main thing that any employer is going to ask you for on any job. And JavaScript. 
JavaScript is the functionality of the website. Things like clicking buttons and, and filling out forms and rollovers and drop down menus and run navigation. Those are all controlled by JavaScript. So it's very important that you have at least those three coding languages proficient before looking for a job. If you don't have them, there are some companies that will actually take you and try to train you and stuff like that. But in this economy, nobody really wants to train anybody. Everybody wants you to know everything right up front. Now, knowledge of some advanced languages is a plus on your side. This can get you a better foot in the door than just knowing the three basic languages. Yes, it's important that you know the three basic languages. And you can make survive pretty good and make pretty good income on just the three basics. But to know some advanced languages like PHP, which was used to create Facebook, or Java, or Perl, ASP, VB.net, which is VisualBasics.net, or C Pound, which is or pronounced C Sharp, are very important as well. Advanced languages will help you get a foot in the door faster, not to mention an increase in salary. So take some time. I know learning languages is not easy. Pick a language that you like. These were all object-oriented programming languages, which I'll explain more about later in my tutorials. But you can choose a language that you're comfortable with. Go forth, learn that language, and then have a second advanced language or a third, fourth advanced language, how many ever you can learn. Under your belt, so when you go for a job, you'll be ready and you'll be more employable and you'll make a lot more money. So that's the end of my second tutorial. My next tutorial is on finding employment, which is super crucial when you're in this uh, field. You want to have a job, even if it's freelance. So check it out. Subscribe. Leave me comments. Let me know how you feel. Thanks.